Hey guys, welcome back to Javid Video Tutorials. This is going to be lesson six. Uh, I'm going to re record it because the first time it got cut off, and I don't know, and the lessons are just better now anyway, so might as well redo it. No harm in that. Um, and this lesson is on functions, so you'll learn how to write functions, what they do, how to use them, that sort of stuff. So, um, not much else. I'm just going to kind of get right into it. Uh, let's go ahead and create a class. So let's go public class functions, and we will do public static void min string array args. Okay. So um, you probably already realized, or I told you that this main right here that is a function, or it's actually a, a method. Uh, in, in Java, everything is a method. There's a subtle difference between the two, so we'll just use the word interchangeably. Main method, main function, same thing. Um, and uh, so we've already been using this, but I'm going to show you how to write additional methods that'll help you if you ever want to, you know, reuse code or uh, what have you. Um, so that that's that's what a function is. A method or a function is a uh, bit of code that you name and generally uh, there's three pieces to what make up a function it has input which are known as parameters and it has an output which is known as a return value and then it has side effects and that's uh, things that the function does that affects the rest of the program uh, and those are called side effects so if you have a function that you know writes to the screen that would be a side effect because you're not returning a value in the program uh, you know so it wouldn't be a return value but it, it's a side effect because you're writing to the screen another side effect might be you know play a sound or you know modify some data structure or uh, you know read the, or uh, uh, you know open a connection to a database or whatever so those would all be known as side effects if you have a function like you know um, you know find the uh, square of a number, you know, and the function is called square, and you want to return that squared value, that'd be a return value. And of course, the input parameters are, uh, you know, that would be in the square example, that would be basically, you know, if you want to square in, whatever you pass in is in, that would be uh, one of your inputs. So those are three pieces to a function, and they're pretty easy to uh, implement. So let's go ahead and uh, Let's just write uh, write one down here. So I'm going to leave nothing in the main method right now and create a new method right below it, and we'll give it uh, public static. Uh, just don't worry about those two just yet. And um, I'm going to make it void as well. We'll learn about that. And let's just call it my function. And you'll see I'm putting the parentheses after it with nothing inside. So the parentheses basically tell uh, the compiler that it's a function and since there's nothing inside the parentheses there will be no arguments so this function uh, has a return type of void and that means I'm not allowed to return any value from this function so everything the function does has to be a side effect so let's go ahead and just uh, write some uh, write a line of code in here that will do something so I'll say System.out.println. You just called my function. <clears throat> okay, so when my function is run, it will execute this line of code, and then it's just going to go back to where it was before. So let's go in here and say, um, you know, let's just say my function. Okay, so we're calling the function. It is a function because it has the parentheses after it uh, there are no arguments and so I'm just going to put it just like that and should be good to go so let's go ahead and compile this I will go back up and save this into lesson 6 functions.java and so it's compiled and we'll just run that you just called my function so that's all it did uh, Basically, there's a like a hidden uh, arrow inside the uh, inside the program when it's executing, and the arrow pretend like this arrow is always pointing to the next line of code that will be executed. 
So uh, we have public class functions, okay, and then public static void main, okay, and then the first line of code inside of that is this call to my function. So when we have call to my function, that arrow will jump down to wherever my function is, and it will start executing everything inside of that function. So we can have multiple statements in here. You know, uh, this is your first function, and then you might want to say, well, not really, because main was your first function. So that arrow is going to point here, it's going to execute this line, then it's going to execute this line, and then this line, and once it gets to the end, there's nothing left, then it's going to go right back to where it left off and continue uh, to the next line of code. In this case, it's main, and so there is no more line of code, uh, no more lines of code, and so it's just going to finish the program. So if we compile that, obviously, we will get three lines printed out. Okay, so that's your most basic function. Let's start giving this a return type. So let's say we want to return a string. So if it says void, you're not going to be able to return any value. If you put a data type here, and it could be any, any data type, object type, primitive type, integer, double, string, boolean, object, anything, uh, you can put it here. And then that means that the function must return this uh, so, uh, return a value of this type. So right now, uh, this won't compile. So if I try to compile this, I get an error, missing return statement, because this is expecting something being returned. So let's try return 5 and see, because 5 is not a string, so will that compile? No, it won't compile. Incompatible types, it found an integer there, but it needs a string. So we need to return some kind of string. So I'm going to get rid of this and have it return you know, uh, this value is returned from the function. Okay, so now we're getting that value returned, and um, it's this is not printing it out on the screen, and that's very important. So once we call this, this this uh, expression here, my function, this is basically just going to turn in to whatever the return value is. So let's compile that and you see it compiles but watch when I run it nothing's going to happen because I didn't tell it to print it, anything out on the screen. But now if I do system out print line and I pass in my function it's going to come to this uh, function call here it's going to put everything else on hold that arrow is going to go down here and execute the function, find the return value, and then this return value basically pretend like it's being copied and pasted right in where that uh, function call was. So if I compile that, you'll see that it will print out this value is returned from the function. So that's how a return value works. Uh, just a couple more examples. I could do like uh, int x equals my function, and that means this would have to be an int, and then I could say, you know, uh, return 2 plus 5. And now I can say like system.out.println x, and of course that will print out 7, because just taking this value, copy and paste into my function so it'll say int x equals 7 essentially and then it will just print out x so those uh, right now we got return value we got side effect and we have return type and what we need uh, finally is the arguments or the parameters passed to the function the difference between an argument and a parameter I don't know if anybody knows this because well plenty of people know it but not enough a parameter is a is what the function is going to take. An argument is what you send to the function. So I'll show you an example of that. Uh, let's say we want our function to square a number. So I'm going to rename this here to square because now this function will actually do something useful. And so we want to square the given number, x. 
So it's going to come in as a, as a number, we'll just call it x, and we want to square it. So int squared equals x times x, right? Just like that. So now we have this uh, variable called squared, and we just, um, we just square the input, which is x, and so now we can return it. Return squared. Okay, and so this value, whatever is returned, will be cut and paste back in here. Int x equals my function. Let's uh, change this to square, and let's make it, um, uh, you know, just like uh, 12, right? So that should be about 144. And we'll run that, and we get 144. So as you see, we give it an input here. 12 here is the argument. The parameter for this function is int x, and it will square those numbers inside of the function. There are no side effects to this function, and we return squared. Now let's say your function is not working the way it should. Maybe you have something like that. And so when I run it, you're like, oh dear, 1,728, that's definitely not the square of 12. And you need to start debugging your function because you know there's a problem with square. So what we do is uh, say, well, let's make sure x is coming in correctly system.out.println x, right? So now we're going to give this function a side effect, and this is really useful for debugging, is just printing out values inside of functions. And you'll see we printed out that 12. So we know it's coming in correctly as a 12, and so that means there's probably something wrong with our function. And then you look, oh, how stupid was I to multiply it by x? second time. So uh, that's something kind of useful if, uh, yeah, if you're not very good at debugging one of your best friends is going to be just the print line and you can put it anywhere in your program and you can just print out a value and see what it is uh, and that would be known as a side effect. In good functional programming you don't want your functions to have any side effects. Um, so that's kind of just something to think about. If you have functions that are printing out a lot of stuff, you might want to think about having the function return those values and then you print them out in your main loop or whatever you're doing. All right, so we've done parameter, we've done return value, return type, side effects. Not much more to do. Um, I just want to show you that you can actually um, put as many um, parameters in your function definition that you want. So I can say it takes an int x, an int y, and a string z, or string str, or you can call it whatever you want. And now let's say um, it's going to print something out and say, uh, you know, like, str plus b square of x plus b plus b double of y is, and now we're going to give it result, and so let's make a result. So we squared x, and let's say int double squared x. Let's just make our double y equals 2 times y. And we'll say int result equals x uh, square x plus double y. And you can make your function do whatever you want. So uh, I'm going to make this into a string instead of printing it out. So I'll say string answer equals that. And then I'll say return answer. And then this, of course, will have to be string. And I can call it whatever. 
and I'm going to say 12 and 5 and my name because it's addressing me and so let's print out whatever and let's go ahead and compile that I did something stupid oh because this is supposed to be a string so let's compile that again everything works and yeah this is a string because we're returning a string rather than an integer and then of course it just said the square of x plus the double of y is 154 and I'm sure you can verify that on your own <clears throat> okay that is functions uh, you can make as many of these suckers as you want and um, for now I just showed you functions inside of the same class as your main method they're static so you'll be <clears throat> calling them uh, without using an object basically that's what it means to be static you're calling it without an object and actually it's kind of implicit when you call it uh, that this square name is inside the functions class so I could put functions dot square and that will do the same thing okay so that's all I have for now uh, hopefully this video did not get cut off like the last one did and I hope you enjoyed it and I've got a bunch more lessons uh, right now so uh, hopefully that wasn't out of sync that's the only thing I'm worried about I just don't want to be non-continuous with the lessons but since I did this one so long ago I might have missed something uh, but just let me know if you have any questions alright I'll see you later thank you for watching